it's Jessie V, and as you can tell by the title of today's video, I'm going to be talking about the lost tapes of the Grinch, and I know, I had no idea there was lost tapes. Last year around Christmas, I did a whole video about Grinch conspiracies, creepy theories in general, and so this time I still wanted to talk about the Grinch, but we're doing something completely different. I'm sure you've never heard about this. Before I get started though, if you have not seen, I'm wearing the new V Team hoodie, and we did something a little bit different this year. We made it a full tracksuit, so you can either get the hoodie, you can get the track pants, you can get them together. The track pants have V-Team all down the leg, and it's all in this glitchy font that I made, because you know I like to talk about creepy glitches, weird things on the internet. I just felt like this was perfect. So if you guys would like one of the new track suits, or just the top, or just the pants, I have linked it down below. The sweaters are a thinner material, but the sweatpants actually have a fleece lining, so they're super fuzzy and warm inside. I just worked really hard on this collection, so I hope you guys like it. Anyways guys, without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Let's first briefly talk about the 1966 version of The Grinch. It was called How the Grinch Stole Christmas because that is what this whole lost tape thing is about. This was an animated movie based off the book that came out in 1966 and this was actually the very first time a Dr. Seuss book was made into a TV special. Now I feel like at this point every single person watching knows what The Grinch is about, but I'm gonna briefly summarize it one more time just so you can compare it to the lost tape version because it is similar but also very very different and very scary. It is Christmas Eve in Whoville and everyone is decorating for Christmas except for the Grinch who lives in a cave on Mount Crumpet and his only companion is his dog Max. So the Grinch just hates Christmas especially all the noise that the Who's make. So he was annoyed with all of their rejoicing and celebrating. He was trying to bear through it for 50 years until finally he comes up with this plan to stop Christmas from coming. So he dresses up like Santa, makes Max look like Rudolph, puts together a sled, and heads to Whoville to steal all of their presents. And then while he's at one of the first houses stealing their Christmas tree, a young girl named Cindy Lou Who wakes up and asks him why he's taking the Christmas tree. So the Grinch fibs his way out of it by telling her that one of the lights is broken and he's taking it to his workshop to fix. And then he just like calmly puts her back to bed in hopes that she forgets about it. Well, after stealing everything, the Grinch takes all of the presents and the decorations back up to Mount Crumpet and he waits to hear all of the Who's crying but instead they are happy and singing carols. It is at this point the Grinch realizes the true meaning of Christmas. His heart grows three sizes that day or whatever it is and he brings everything back to the Who's and is invited to stay with them for the holidays even carving the roast beast at the end. So it's just a really fun story and obviously at the end it has this really heartwarming meaning and all is good and calm in the world. Well this does not happen in the lost tapes version. So there's this creepypasta that talks about one of the animators that worked on this movie getting fired and he was so angry that he decided to take revenge on his team and he made his own version of the Grinch movie that looked very similar to the one that we all know but it changed ever so slightly towards the end. It was said that he made about 50 copies of this version and went around the states putting them in libraries and stores basically in hopes that somebody would take it home and watch it thinking it was the real version when it wasn't. Now in this lost version everything was the same like I said until about the middle-ish point of the movie when the Grinch decided to dress up as Santa to go to Whoville to steal all of the presents. He went to the first house and started stuffing up the tree in the chimney when he saw Cindy Lou Who. And that's when he got an awful idea, a very awful idea. He decided to throw her into the present bag as well. He thought that if this beloved little girl went missing it would guarantee heartbreak and misery on Christmas Day. So he creeped up to her pretending he was Santa Claus and reached out his hand for her to take it. And when she did, he flung her into the air and into the bag of gifts. She was yelling and trying to escape, but it was no use. She couldn't get out. And all the outside world could hear was her muffled cries, not loud enough to alert anybody. Once he got all the gifts, he went back up to his mountain, ready to throw them over the edge. And that's when he saw all the who's coming out of their houses calling for Cindy. Her parents were running around screaming and crying and the Grinch thought the noise was even worse than the Christmas celebrating because there's nothing like mourning, there's nothing like being afraid for a missing child. So he thought he would be getting rid of the noise but he just made it even worse. Now while the Grinch's back was turned, Cindy was able to finally poke her head out of the bag to look around until she was able to slowly climb out. She ran towards the sound of people calling 
her name, but she didn't notice the steep edge of the cliff that she was on and she fell off and down, down, down she went. The snow curled around her until she was completely wrapped up in it, rolling down Mount Crumpet into this giant snowball. The snowball rolled right into town and stopped right in front of her parents. There's your little Cindy, the Grinch called down to them. And the movie ends with all of the people trying to claw her out of this giant snowball as fast as they can. But then the screen cuts to black, insinuating that they probably wouldn't have been able to get her out on time. Now the creepypasta says that a few of these lost tapes still exist to this day, and because they are so rare, some of them are selling for $500,000. Now of course this story is only legend, or so people think, but one could never be too sure the extent someone would go for revenge. And it's actually crazy how many like lost tapes creepypastas I've read that stem from someone in the animation studio being fired and then making like a revenge version of the TV show or of the movie so it would scare kids. How horrible is that? Like imagine going to a movie store thinking you're going to just rent The Grinch. Oh, you love this movie. I mean, I watch it every single year. And then I turn it on and I watch Cindy Lou Who dying inside of a snowball. Yeah, no, that is absolutely terrible. But yeah, like I said, it is only supposed to be a creepypasta, but still be careful. If you notice the movie taking a strange turn, turn it off. Don't, uh, don't continue watching that. Comment down below which version of The Grinch is your ultimate favorite. I always love the Jim Carrey version, the live action version, and I'm probably gonna watch that this week now that I've done this video. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you like the whole like lost tapes and lost episodes, I could do one about like Rudolph or Frosty the Snowman. I have seen those lingering around on the internet. So give this video a thumbs up if you would like me to do that. And don't forget if you would like one of these new glitchy tracksuits, I have put all the links down below for you. And don't forget we do have a small amount of Christmas mystery boxes left if you would like one. Now is the time if you want to get it for Christmas. But yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!